There's an old method of capturing monkeys where you take a jar or some sort of container with an opening that's just big enough for the hand of a monkey to fit through. And inside of this jar or container, you would place an interesting object. It could be some sort of desired food or, for example, a shiny object. When the monkey inserts its hand inside of the jar and grabs the object and makes a fist, its hand will be too big to leave the jar. But the interesting thing is, the monkey will refuse to let the object go, even as you approach it. And as a result, you can simply walk right up to it and pick it up and capture it. When you analyze this scenario, the interesting portion is, though the body of the monkey is ensnared, it isn't trapped in any sort of way. The monkey can simply let the object go and run free, but rather it is the mind of the monkey that becomes trapped. You could say that this object has hypnotized it. It's not that the object has any sort of magical properties on its own, but this relationship between the mind of the monkey and the object, the monkey is hypnotized by it in some sort of way. And as a result, the body becomes sort of like collateral damage. And in this scenario, the monkey is actually hypnotizing itself. It's projecting a portion of its own mind onto this object and it becomes hypnotized by that. And all of that is fine and well. But what if I told you this scenario that I just laid out is a very fitting metaphor for our position in this cosmos as conscious beings. I find it extremely interesting that you can obviously explore religion and spiritual practice. You can explore philosophy. And even now within physics, they all seem to share this sentiment that this world we all live in, this material plane of existence isn't what we think it is. It's an artifice of some kind. Within philosophy, you obviously have the famous allegory of Plato's cave where our reality is simply shadows of some true dimension. Within physics, there was this idea of the holographic universe, which pretty much makes a similar claim that our reality is sort of like shadows being cast by these hyperdimensional objects. And those examples will come up later, but probably the most famous and to me the most interesting example of this is the Islamic Judeo-Christian creation myth. This story of Adam and Eve that we all know. I like using this myth because everyone knows it and you don't have to be a philosophy or physics guru or nerd to understand what's going on here. According to this myth, the way that this all began was similar to the example of the monkey. We were enticed by some being of higher intelligence with an object. And the most interesting portion of this event is when Adam and Eve partook in the apple, when they ate of the fruit, the skies didn't part, the thunder didn't roar, nothing special or extravagant happened. The only thing that occurred was a change in their perspective. That's it. And this change in their perspective cast them out from this superposition of being one with deity and cast them into what we commonly today refer to as the material world, the material domain. And the only information given about this change in perspective was that they gained the knowledge of good and evil. So there is this introduction of this dualist motif. And this shift into this Weird dualist framework is ironically difficult to detangle, but you can sort of imagine it that it allowed for this interplay, this up and downness, this on and offness. It allowed for this interplay that ultimately forms this reality that we live in. It's almost like it's some sort of frequency 
this yin and yangness is some sort of hypnotic dance that has us all in this trance. And ultimately, our perception operates today as apprehension of frequency, or as I commonly put it, apprehension of pattern. I talk about this in several videos, which I'll have on the screen. We view reality as patterns now. If it does not fall into some sort of pattern, it simply makes no sense to us. This is, this is the whole deal with chaotic systems and randomness, which I did a video on. And what a pattern is, is simply a frequency. A pattern is something that predictably repeats. And our entire framework that we have of reality is based on this. This duality allows for things to be divided, which ultimately creates what we all call detail. It's sort of like viewing reality through a net. This is sort of how logic operates. And it is via viewing reality through this net, sort of how we view things through a Cartesian coordinate system. It is via viewing things through this way that things can be differentiated and have unique positions, which is all a perspective is. This is the key portion of all of this. That across all sorts of various viewpoints on how this all began, there was some sort of unity or wholeness that began to differentiate into different perspectives. There was some sort of divergence. In physics, they call it decoherence. There was some sort of form of unity that began to branch out into multiplicity. This ultimately results in just this endless amount of perspectives. And this differentiation, which gave birth to detail, gave us the ability to learn. This is what we are all doing in life. We are slowly figuring things out. Life is just a series of you finding out. You know, when Adam and Eve, when their perspective shifted, the very first thing that occurred was they learned. They realized that they were naked. If you exist in some sort of superposition, if you want to call it God, if you exist in this position to where you know everything, what else is there to know? It's as I always phrase it. If you knew everything, there would be nothing left to imagine. So by differentiation, you instantaneously create the unknown. You create the other. And this is where our free will comes from. I talk about this in another video, which I'll have on the screen. Simply by virtue of you not knowing something, you give birth to this entirely new dynamic. You create the known and unknown, this yin and yangness, this polarity that has been dancing and it has us all in this trance. And this frequency, this polarity is kind of what has our minds trapped here. Our consciousness is hypnotized by it, just like the monkey with the shiny object. And what I believe will ultimately happen is this trance, this illusion, this artifice, however you choose to phrase it, it will eventually wear off. It will eventually collapse in on itself. Or I guess a better way of phrasing it is we will grow past it. We will evolve beyond it. Consciousness, you could say that it tore itself apart and is putting itself back together again, almost like some sort of really far out psychedelic trip. You know, when you read the claims that people make about this state of mind, some people claim that it was like their entire consciousness was torn apart and put back together again. Perhaps something like that is happening on a cosmic scale that we are a part of. And what I'm talking about has been phrased in so many different dozens of ways, but you can imagine this reassembly of consciousness as consciousness expanding, as I've previously stated, or as I've most recently put it, consciousness is sort of mutating across dimensions.
When you look at the story of Adam and Eve, if you pay attention when they partook of the fruit and their perspective change, that was supposedly the very first mutation and consciousness has been mutating ever since. This mutation across dimensions that I'm talking about is simply another way of saying learning what a dimension is, you know, the formal way of looking at it. It has been described as the amount of points needed to plot something on a on a grid. Another way of looking at it is the amount of axis that something is able to move through. How many different directions can something move? That is the quote unquote official way of going about all of this. But the interesting thing about that is the only difference between dimensions in that case is knowledge. It's simply a lack of information and understanding that creates the illusion. There's that word again that creates the illusion of dimensionality. I talked about this in one of my really old videos about what illusions are Illusions occur from a lack of understanding. It's simply your brain coming to an incorrect conclusion about a set of facts. And the way to see through a paradox, an illusion, is to simply add more perspective. And this newly added perspective is the introduction of a new dimension. The only reason why you can't jump into next week is simply because you don't know how to. The same way if you are looking at a 2D scenario, even though you know and can simply move across three dimensions, it's as easy as slicing a, a slice of pie. But to someone who is Perceiving in 2D, what you are suggesting is just frankly impossible. And it is only impossible because they don't have your perspective. They just simply don't know how to do it. And I hope you're able to follow and understand what I'm trying to say, that telling someone who perceives in 2D to go around something is just like me telling you, yesterday I will ran tomorrow. Obviously, within this 3D perspective, we have these things called contradictions and paradoxes that to us, what I just said is nonsensical. It is impossible. But in actuality, it's just impossible to us and somewhere else in some other plane it makes complete and perfect sense but to extrapolate further and go deeper in the rabbit hole in actuality there is no such thing as different dimensions there is nothing different about them that is just our own left and rightness type of dualist logic at play that has to separate and make them distinct. But in actuality, there is some sort of total whole. And the portions of this total whole that you can be aware of is simply the dimension that the dimensional perspective that you have. And consciousness is sort of Going on an adventure back into this totality, it is sort of like the hero's journey. It is coming back into a relationship with itself. It is becoming what it once was, which is everything. And where I differ from a lot of people on this is I believe the scale of what I'm talking about is just completely it is bigger than astronomical it is completely unfathomable and we are like some sort of tiny subsection of it that very similar to fractals this consciousness is it is this collection of perspectives that is occurring on some sort of cosmic scale bigger than a cosmic scale that like a fractal, each perspective has its own infinity within it. Each moment of each instance has infinities within infinities. 
that there are realities inside of realities inside of realities. It's kind of like that movie Inception of a dream within a dream within a dream. It is something like that. But somehow, some way, each reality, each plant, each person, each perspective is equally as valid and important to the whole totality. Nothing can be lost. Absolutely nothing. Not the cells in your body, not the dust mites that are crawling over your, over your face and your skin. Absolutely nothing is lost. And you know, this has all sort of been a long-winded introduction. I haven't really gotten to the subject of this video. That, as I mentioned previously, that all dimensions exist simultaneously and we are only able to view a portion of it. And similar to the allegory of Plato's cave, that this reality we perceive is some sort of illusion. It isn't what things actually are. For example, a tree. To you, it's a tree. But to a bird, it's a house. And to something else, it's food. But what it actually is, is far out. We have no idea. Just like the example with the monkey in the beginning, the object inside of the jar doesn't have any sort of magical properties. It is via the monkey projecting its own consciousness, its own psyche onto the object, that it becomes ensnared by it. Similarly for us, we project our own psyche onto reality and that's what forms this world that we have, this reality that we live in. In other words, things have to mean something to you in order for them to exist to you. Everything that you encounter, your mind has to assign some sort of meaning to it. It has to extract some sort of meaning from it or this object you're looking at simply disappears into some sort of chaotic static. Not that the object literally ceases to exist. This isn't a question of object permanence, but to you, the quote-unquote subjective observer, it certainly isn't there. It doesn't register. I mean, we know this neuroscientifically that if something isn't important, the brain just simply filters it out. It, it was never there. It just simply never existed. But this is simultaneously when it is actually what it actually is. Some people would say that our reality is sort of the result of these higher dimensional objects sort of pressing or interfacing with this one. I mostly agree with that, but with a giant caveat that reality itself is some sort of totality. It's some sort of single hyperdimensional object, for a lack of a better way of saying it. But once we go through this formality of perceiving something, uh, assigning a meaning from something, we sort of break it apart. It's sort of like reality is this steel pond that you can just see straight through to the bottom. But when we actually go through the trouble of perceiving something, it's like we disturb this water. We poke our finger in it and all of these ripples occur. And the only thing that happens is we can just see our reflection in the ripples. This is sort of what reality is to us. Or another example that comes to mind is the white light through a prism, that reality is just this clear light that we is it's invisible to us and we are sort of like this prism that filters it out and there is this assortment of colors and these colors can combine with other colors to make more colors we are sort of like this prism that is refracting it but I believe people take this metaphor, for example, with Buddhism, they sort of take this steel pond realization and they think that this implies some sort of tranquility, that the natural state of reality is some sort of cool, tranquil state. But I stand on the opposite end of that spectrum. 
I think that this is probably the most chill version of reality. This 3D perspective that we all have is probably as chill as things get. Consciousness is sort of mutating across dimension. It is this hero's journey up to this unfathomable point. And as the story progresses, I think things just get wackier and wackier because the end state is this point of infinite possibility where anything could happen. But in order to get to this point where anything could happen, everything has to happen first. Perhaps what I'm saying has some resonance with the theory of many worlds. You know, this whole multiple realities thing that there are all of these realities that are essentially the manifestations of every possible possibility. Perhaps it's something like that. You know, science and mysticism or religion, they butt heads all the time. But I do believe that ultimately we are just confirming what people thousands of years ago already knew. But this domain of infinite potentiality, if you had to use one word to describe it, it would be strange, weird. The metaphor of the circus has been used before. I've also stated that it's like a really far out Dr. Seuss book. And consciousness is sort of eternally unfolding into a new domain. It's sort of like the allegory of Plato's cave, but 2.0. You can take this concept of fractals and just slap it onto this allegory. And that's what I'm talking about. That within the allegory, you sort of escape this cave and you emerge out into the quote unquote real world. But what I am suggesting is that you never escape Plato's cave, that this quote unquote true domain you have arrived in is just the cave of some other higher place. And consciousness is constantly escaping Plato's cave. And the moment you think that I have arrived. I have finally figured it all out. I know everything. I have certainty. That's where you stop growing. That is where your story ends. And instantaneously, you become just like the people who were trapped inside of the cave in the first place. They thought that they knew. They thought that this is what life was, unbeknownst to them that there is this entirely new domain. And there is always a new domain to be seen and discovered just by adding more perspective. Reality is like this really strange hyperstructure with an infinite amount of rooms. And each room contains a different set of rules than the previous. And consciousness is sort of traveling through them. It is, it is going on this wild and wacky ride. I phrased it as it is like this really far out alternator belt. Consciousness is going on all of these wild loops, twists, and turns. It is seeing what it's like to be a plant. It is, see, it is seeing what it's like to be a bee. It is seeing what it's like to be you, your 12-year-old self, the version of you that your 12-year-old self thought that it would be in some alternate reality. It is doing and experiencing all of these things. And it is being powered by just this domain of infinite possibility. This domain of infinite possibility is sort of permeating or infiltrating some other domain, this one. I always make the connection that it's like sand flowing through an hourglass, that eventually when everything that could possibly happen happens, all of the sand from the top of the hourglass will be at the bottom and we will be forced up out into some other place, some other domain that I can't even cover it with language for you. And the way that I believe this all relates to us, you know, our little slice of this reality with these infinite amount of rooms, we are still within a cave of some sorts. But eventually this will change this 3D universe. There will be some sort of collapse, some sort of change to it. 
the best way I can describe it is it will almost be like the infiltration of some other domain into this one. And I have ideas about this, but I will save those for my members. Uh, obviously, many of the things that I talk about are just too much for a normal YouTube audience to, to handle and deal with. So if you have a particular interest in that kind of thinking and that kind of thing and speculation, uh, consider becoming a member and support the channel. This is going to be an idea that I seriously jumped down the rabbit hole on and hopefully together we can all come to a better understanding. And I wish I could just put it on YouTube normally, but uh, people already think that I'm unhinged. So I'll save it for people with that sort of niche interest. Like the video if you find it interesting. Comment what you think. Subscribe to the channel. And until next time, y'all have a blessed day.